Hi, welcome to Bonita's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. What I'm going to be showing you how to make today is raisin tea buns. I know many of my viewers is probably saying, I know how to make tea buns, I don't need to see yours. But if you're like me, I love looking at everybody's recipes and if it helps me make something different, I'm all in on that. So, just join me on putting these delicious raisin tea buns together and let's get going. I'm going to tell you the ingredients that I'm going to be using in my raisin tea buns today. And if you're joining along making these delicious tea buns with me, you may already know what that ingredients are. So what we're going to be using is one large egg. We're going to be using the half a cup of evaporated milk. If you don't have evaporated milk, you can use cream. A half a cup of sugar. I'm using white sugar and if you can use sugar of choice. Two cups of flour, I'm using white flour, you can also use your choice of flour. A half a cup of cold butter. If you're using margarine, it will take the recipe out a little bit to taste it different, but you could use margarine if you got that on end. Um, we're using a half a cup of raisins, and that's raisins of choice. We're using a, a quarter of a teaspoonful of salt, and four teaspoonfuls of baking powder. So what I'm going to do now is blend all of our dry ingredients together. Let's get going. So I'm going to be adding in the dry ingredients into my large bowl. So that's two cups of flour. You can sift it beforehand and then put it into your measuring cup. A half a cup of sugar. A quarter of a teaspoonful of salt and four teaspoonfuls of baking powder. So what I'm gonna do first is just mix this around just to get it all incorporated. So after all our dry ingredients is incorporated together, we're gonna to be using one egg, crack it into a little bowl first, just to make sure there's no shells, and then mix it around. And then we're going to add it in to our evaporated milk, and that's half of, of a cup. Stir it around. I hope you're all following along. Uh, this is a very simple recipe, but it's delicious. Now I got the egg and the evaporated milk put together. I'm just putting that to the side. We're going to be using a half a cup of cold butter, and as you can see, this is really it's really cold, it's not room temperature. We're going to be adding this to the dry ingredients and we're going to work it through with our hands. So let's get going on that. So dump the cold butter right on top of your dry ingredients like this. And before you start mixing, make sure your rings are off and your ends have been cleaned. So now what we're going to do is take the butter and pinch it into the flour. If you've got a food processor, you can do this portion into that. It will mix it together nice, but just um, pulsing your food processor just to blend the butter in with the dry ingredients. So just keep going like this with your hands until you've squeezed all of the butter into the ingredients. Okay, so after you have breaking, broken the butter down into the dry ingredients and mixed all around to make sure all of the dry ingredients is equally incorporated around the butter, I'll show you what's next. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. What we're going to do next, we're going to be mixing in the evaporated milk with the one large egg. Now, some of you might want to make more than this. Um, this uh, batch makes 24 tea buns, raisin tea buns, but I would recommend that you would make it in these portions and then what you can do is make another batch after this instead of doubling up on everything. Um, so what to do first is mix the liquid into the dry ingredients with the butter with a spatula first and then we'll use our hand again. So after you've mixed it around until you can't mix it anymore with the spatula, 
uh, we'll take it out. So what I'm doing now is just taking all of the batter off of the spatula because I want to incorporate that in together. So we're going to be forming this into a ball, but before we do, we're going to add in a half a cup of raisins. So you're just going to sprinkle the raisins over, equally over, all of the batter. Okay, so now using your hand, or if you're still using your food processor, again, just like pulps, pu pulse onto the food processor because we don't want to mix it. You're just blending the raisins now into your, uh, all of your ingredients until you form a ball. It gets a little mess messy, but don't mind that. Just let it come off, all of the batter come off your ends as you're moving it around. And then what you're doing, you're creating a ball. So you'd see this like that, taking in the rest of the ingredients, pushing down and forming the ball until all of the ingredients is incorporated. Okay, so your, your raisin tea bond batter is going to look like this. So it's just really only a ball now. And what I'm going to do is show you how to shape it out into small tea buns. So I hope if you're making these raisin tea buns along with me today, yours is coming along in this stage the same. Um, and if so, please send me a picture of your batter and, and maybe the end result, your tea buns. So we'll need a cookie sheet with a piece of parchment paper and take a little bit of the dough and just put on either side of the parchment paper on the pan. And this is just to help um, the parchment paper from slipping. You don't want for your tea buns to fall on the floor when you go to put them into the oven. So that just sticks the parchment paper to the pan. Now normally I would roll this out onto a, a rolling board and use a cookie cutter and cut out really nice, perfectly shaped tea buns. But I'm not going to show you that today. I'm going to show you how to take pieces off your, your ball of batter and make tea buns that way. So let's get started on that. Okay, so what we're going to do um, with our ball of what is now a ball of dough, we're going to be pinching off just a nice little piece. And then what you can do is just, you can roll it or you can just shape it like this, whatever way you want to do it. If you don't want it this size and you want it this size, because some people like likes a bigger tea bun, you can do that. So, but if you're going to go with this size, are going to go with that size, you need to make all of them the same because they're going to have the same equal baking time. So right now, I'm going to be making it this size because I want it to be a little bigger. And then after you make it, just put it down onto your cookie sheet with the parchment paper. Um, if you're afraid you don't know what size that is and you you want to measure it or you want to weigh it, that's fine too, but just put it down having each one of them equal. Okay, so you just continue on making it like that. If um, you're making uh, the smaller ones, you'll get to 24 T-bonds. If you're making bigger ones, you probably won't get as many. And remember, if you're um, wanting a double batch, my recommendations would be to make two separate uh, batches and that way you're certain that the consistency is going to be right and you're not working it uh, with a double batch unless you're using the food processor which would be easier. So keep continuing doing that until you got your tray full. Okay so after you've shaped out your tea buns we're going to be preheating the oven to 350 degrees. I'm putting the timer 15 minutes. Peek in probably 10 minutes into it to make sure everything is looking well, because depending on your oven, between 10 to 15 minutes, these tea buns will be done. 15 minutes being the max, and you'll have a nice light golden brown. So meet me back here 
when yours is baked and when mine is baked, and I'll show you what they look like. Welcome back to Vanity's Kitchen. I hope that your tea buns are all baked now. Mine is just coming out of the oven. I'm taking it off the tray because you don't want them to continue baking with the hot tray. So put it on a grate and then uh, and then that will cool them down. And I'll put a couple of tea buns over onto my plate and I'm going to show you, I'm going to open it up and show you what it looks like on the inside. This smells delicious here. I hope you found this recipe super easy to make and that your tea buns are out now on the counter and it looks equally delicious. I'm going to cut into this one now, show you what it looks like. I'm going to put a little bit of butter on it. Okay, oh, just look at the steam coming out of this one. And look at all the raisins. You know, usually a half a cup, sometimes you think it's not enough because I do make quite a few tea buns but they're equally distributed to the tea bun. And just look, and all the steam coming out of it. Delicious. I also like a little bit of jam on mine, even those raisins in there. Something about jam with everything. Mm. So moist and it's not sweet, even though the raisins is added in there to add that extra sweetness. Mm. Delicious. I can't wait to finish that one and have a little taste of tea. I hope you found this recipe easy and uh, interesting for you today. And I know, like you said, if you made tea buns before, you you probably would enjoy just trying these. Um, and when they to when they're totally cool, you can store them in a container or in a plastic bag, and they'll stay moist right to the last tea bun. So for more traditional and non-traditional Newfoundland uh, recipes, you can visit me on www.vanitaskitchen.com or on YouTube. And if you visit me on YouTube, please subscribe. It's free. Just hit the top right-hand corner link, subscribe, and it'll prompt you to what you need to do. You can also visit me on my Facebook page, uh, like and share so you can have it on yours. And you can send me a tweet on Twitter. You can't have raisin tea buns without having a nice cup of hot tea to add with them. So from my kitchen to yours, thank you for joining us and you have a wonderful day.